24th of June 2004, Jim Donnelly, a scientist at the Glenbrook Steel Mill, signed in and was never seen again. Jim Donnelly, a father of two, went missing after a very strange weekend and a couple of weeks before that he was rather um, stressed and in a bit of turmoil. Nothing seemed to be right and his wife could not find any answers to this. Jim's wife Tracy spoke to Stephen who was a good friend of Jim's since school. He contacted her back and told her security had trespassed a man from the workplace the day before. The number plate on the car matched Jim's. That Monday, he disappeared. He stopped at the garage, bought himself some gas and a muffin. Then he proceeded to work, parked his car, signed in, and then nothing more was seen or heard of him again. There was an unidentified car seen pulling up next to Jim's car in the car park, but on seeing the uniforms and the patrol cars, turned its lights off and drove away. This car has never been identified or seen again. Hi everybody, I hope you're enjoying this investigation of Jim Donnelly. I really, really enjoyed myself doing it. Um, I love things with twists and nooks and crannies and things, you know, things to really hunt into and look into, but there wasn't a lot to go into because um, there was about three or four different sites that had things done on it. Um, but apart from that, the rest was using your own initiative, I suppose you'd say. Um, on that note, um, I did put some questions in the video, as you noticed, uh, but I've also written some down myself. Like, why was he so anxious and preoccupied? What was on his mind and why couldn't he tell anybody? Why did he have to divert a crisis and what was the crisis? Did he see something? What happened to his car key and his house keys? There's a theory that his car key disappeared because they were going to move his body in the car out of, of the building and off the side so that it looked like he'd left the building. They didn't get to do this though because the alarm went off earlier than expected. I was his hard hat, hat found separate from his belongings because his belongings were in the vat and the hard hat was on the floor by the vat. <laughs> there are things that haven't been answered, strangely enough. Um, Police have been back to the site. They have um, uh, re-asked people questions again. They brought cadaver dogs in. Nothing's been found. Um, the only thing that hasn't been looked at was the oxidation pond. Um, that's quite uh, full with nasty stuff. <laughs> and it's quite large, apparently. <clears throat> Yet there's still no sign of this man who disappeared. Why did no one see him at work? That's a good, that's what I can't understand. Why was there no sighting of him at work? Or if there was, how can somebody just vanish? And I'm sure there's more than just like 10 employees here. I'm sure it's quite a big place. Um, sort of got me curious as to why nobody really saw what happened. Or Yeah. Um, as I said, there were four options. The first was... Um, I can't remember what the first was now. What was it? <laughs> I sort of forget if you phase out a bit with it. Um, right. The first one was an accident. The second was planned disappearance. And the third was a suicide. But there would have been a body found by now. Also, I think if there was an accident, something would have been found. 
Um, and the fourth one was foul play. My feeling is to go to foul play because I think with all the stuff that's gone on and the circumstances around the whole thing, it's just very, very weird and strange and it just fits the profile of a foul play incident. Since doing this, um, I've seen, uh, prior to this, I did see an article, sorry, a video um, done by Haunted Auckland called Franklin Frolics. Um, please go and have a look at it because it is interesting because Han Anne Haw Hawthorne, um, Small, medium, rare. Lovely lady. Met her at King's Seat. Um, picked up on the spirit there. She's a medium. She picked up on the spirit there of Jim Donnelly, who told her he had been killed, that he had been put into a, a, a barrel and had been transported off the site <coughs> and uh, pumped in water. Whether it is the oxidation pond or not, we will not know. And we may never know. Since also doing this investigation, I found something else. Michael Joseph Davies, also known as Michael Waipuri, accused of murdering Lance John Murphy. He announced that Lance John Murphy had admitted that he was a hitman and had killed 10 people, one of which was a work colleague from the steel factory called Jim Donnelly. Now, we will never know if that is very true or not, because Murphy is dead and Michael Whippery, they will only say that is hearsay. They can't prove it. So, again, is that real or is it not? It sounds quite feasible to me. Um, especially if you read up on what Lance John Murphy was like. Anyway, that's all for now, folks. Hope you thoroughly enjoyed this. I hope you did. I really do. Put your comments below. Please do comment on this. It's nice to see when people comment on these. And if you've got something you want to say about what you feel about it, um, by all means, put a comment on Like the video, too. Like the video. It's always good to have a liked video in, in our YouTube status. <coughs> Again, that's all for now, folks. See you on the other side. Bye for now.